So in today's session of binomial theorem, we are going to uh, primarily focus on the binomial coefficient and the binomial coefficient series. Okay. So we are going to focus on binomial coefficient and binomial coefficient series. So I'll be starting with binomial coefficient properties. I'll say, sir, we have already done this in our permutation combination. I agree. You have already done this, but it's very important for us to know them again or revisit them again, at least in order to make a progress in this chapter. Okay. So what are the properties that you have learned with respect to binomial coefficient? The first property that you already you know, are aware of NCR and NCN, sorry, NC0 and NCN both have the same values. Okay. Very simple property. Next property is, next property is NCR and NCN minus R are same values. This is also known to you. The number of ways to select R distinct objects from N distinct objects is the same way as the number of ways to select N minus R objects, which you actually don't want to select. Okay. Next writing NCR in terms of the lower coefficients. Okay. So you can write NCR as N by R times N minus one CR minus one. You can further write it as N N minus one R R minus one times N minus two CR minus two. And this can continue on and on. This can continue on and on. Okay. N minus three C R minus R minus three. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. I'm just writing dot, 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 just to show that it can continue on and on. Next NCR upon NCR minus one is N minus R plus one by R very, very important property, especially when you need the ratio of these binomial coefficients, this property is very, very useful. Okay. And Pascal's triangle. Okay. So everybody knows Pascal's triangle NCR plus NCR minus one is equal to N plus one CR. This is your Pascal's triangle guys and girls. We have already done this. This is called the Pascal's identity. So we have already done this. We are not you know, doing it again. We are just quickly recapping it so that if at all we need it, we can use it. Okay. Next. R C R R plus one C R R plus two C R all the way till N C R. Okay. Okay. Anybody who knows what is going to be the result of this? Anybody who knows what's going to be the result of this? Have you seen this in a series ever before? I think Harshita should be able to answer this. Ah, R. <laughs> R, R or R plus one. <laughs> so it's N plus one C R plus one. Okay. Now this is actually called a hockey stick identity. Okay. This is what we call as the hockey stick identity. Hockey stick identity. Now how it actually works. How it actually works. If you add these two. Now see here, this RCR, you can actually write it as R plus one C R plus one, because that's actually one, right? If you add these two, okay, you'll end up getting, you'll end up getting R plus two C R plus one. Correct. Now, if you add these two, that'll give you R plus three C R plus one. And this will continue till you reach, till you reach, uh, the term before this will be N C R plus one. Correct. So if you add these two, you'll get N plus one C R plus one. Is it fine? So this is the small proof for this. I'll be just, you know, removing this off just to make it look a little bit more nicer, but this is the proof for it. So I'll be re rewriting it again, not to worry. Okay. So this will give you R plus two C R plus one, then R plus two C R and 
R plus two C R plus one will actually give you R plus three C R plus one. Okay, and this will continue till I reach dot 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 till I reach N C R plus one and N C R, which is your last term. That will be N plus one C R plus one, which is your right hand side. Okay, so just keep it in your mind in case you need it any time to solve a question. Now coming to uh, some important series that we are going to. Come across in our discussion in today's session. So I hope everybody has noted these first six results. Okay, done. Okay, so these are the series which everybody should be aware of. I mean, I have already discussed this in our uh, permutation combination chapter, but I am revisiting it again. N C zero, N C one, N C two, all the way till N C n is actually two to the power n. Now, how does this result actually come out? Very simple. So. Uh, In this question, what do you do? You just write one plus x to the power of n. Okay, one plus x to the power n. If you write, this is going to be your expansion. Okay. Just put x as one in both the sides. So when you put in both the sides, okay, you will end up getting n c zero, n c one, n c two, etc. Till n c n. Okay. So this is nothing but two to the power on this side, and you end up getting n c zero, n c one, etc. Till n c n. So this result is going to be very, very important. At every nook and corner, you will find that this result is going to be utilized in solving many questions. Okay. So please make a note of this, everybody. Okay. Now, based on the same approach, we have another result, which is again known to you, but still I'm re rewriting it for you. N C zero, N C two, N C four, till wherever it allows it to go. This will be same as N C one, N C three, N C five, da 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 da. Okay. How does this result actually come about? And of course, these two results will be equal to two to the power of n minus one. So what is the proof for this result? What is the proof for this result? Let's look into it very, very quickly. We are already aware of it. So in this result, what I am going to do? So this is the result which everybody knows. Dot dot dot. Let me write one more. So in this result, we are going to put our x value as a minus one. Okay. So when you do that, the left hand side becomes a zero. Right hand side will start getting these terms with alternative sign. Okay. Now what is going to happen? Just send the odd positions on one side. I'm sorry. Odd positions on one side like this, and even positions on one side. Dot dot. Okay. So this proves the first half of the proof. Now, what is the value of each one of them? Very simple. See, let's say I call this as x. Okay, let's say I call this as x as well. Okay, from property number seven, we see that when we add everything, we get two to the power n. That means from property number seven, I can say x plus x is nothing but two to the power n, which means two x is two to the power n. So x is two to the power n minus one. Right, so each one of them is actually equal to two to the power n minus one. 
is it fine any questions any concerns any questions any concerns okay so actually i was checking your notes of binomial theorem in the last session uh we had completed till divisibility right if i am not mistaken we had just completed till uh, divisibility questions correct okay so there are few more concepts uh, that we have to take up before we start using binomial theorem uh, before we start talking about binomial theorem series i thought we had completed those uh, mysterious things so before i start with binomial coefficient series and before we start using all these eight properties that we have discussed we have some uh, concepts left off that we need to finish it off okay so let's note this down and let's start with those concepts which we have to finish it off okay all right so let's begin with some questions so we had completed yeah okay so these are some miscellaneous questions that we need to touch upon okay let's take this question i hope this is legible to everybody show that the integral part show that the integral part of this expansion is odd okay where n is a natural number that means if you put any natural number power on this expression and you expand it you are going to not expand it you just calculate the value of it let's say if you put a value of n as a 1 okay you'll get a number that number's integral part will be an odd number if you put 2 also you will get a number that number's also integral part will be odd number so like that any natural number power if you put you will always get an odd number in the integral part of your answer that means your answer would be some odd number dot something or decimal some value okay how do you prove this kind of a question or how do you show this kind of a question without actually citing examples uh should i give you one minute to try this out would you like to try this out yes anybody any idea how to proceed okay all of you please pay attention see let's say this expression this expression n being a natural number gives you i plus f f is some fractional part okay f is some fractional part which lies between 0 and 1 okay and i is some integer okay and i is some integer i is some integer part okay actually i have written i that itself means integer so no need to explain what is i here now let us take a let us consider an expression like this okay now i claim that this expression will always be a fraction 
okay i claim that this expression will always be a fraction and that to a non zero fraction now why see very simple 25 root 25 is 5 and root 24 is this expression correct so the gap between root 25 and root 24 has to be lesser than 1 please note that in order to have a gap of 1 and more the difference should be of root 25 and root 16 that means 5 and 4 then only the gap will become equal to 1 so this gap is actually a fraction and if you raise that gap to a natural number power that still be a fraction because fraction raised to a natural number is again a fraction okay now let us do one thing let us add the two okay let us add the two so when you add the left hand side and the right hand side again i will not write everything down please note that since the sign in between is opposite every second term will start getting cancelled that means 5 to the power n will come in both the expressions but the next term which is n c 1 5 to the power n minus 1 2 root 6 that will get cancelled off okay so the the term which is going to be coming immediately after 5 to the power n will be n c 2 5 to the power n minus 2 2 root 6 square okay again the next term will be n c 4 5 to the power n minus 4 2 root 6 to the power of 4 and so on and so forth okay so on the right side you will be left with i plus f plus f dash am i right any questions here now one important thing you would note down here that every term involved here will be an integer every term involved over here will be an integer check it out yes or no why every term will be an integer because see n c r will anyways be an integer right 5 to the power a natural number will anyways be an integer but this irrational term which is 2 root 6 is always subjected to even power if you see it that means there will not be any irrationality involved so it will always be a rational in fact it will always be integer so all these terms will be integers 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 in short you will end up getting 2 into an integer which is actually an even integer okay and on the right side you will get on the right side you will get i plus f plus f dash correct yes or no now all of you would appreciate this fact that if this is an integer and this is an integer whether even or odd this both this is an integer right and this is also an integer so from here can i say f plus f dash will also be an integer agreed because only an integer added to another integer can give you an integer right now let's come to this expression that i have written over here and this expression which i have written over here if you add the two you will end up getting f plus f dash to lie between 0 and 2 add this two if you add these two from here you can make this conclusion now the only integer which lies between 0 to 2 has to be 1 right because here you are claiming that f plus f dash is an integer and f plus f dash is between 0 to 2 so the only integer which lies between 0 to 2 is a 1 right which means an even integer is equal to the integral part plus 1 which means i has to be even integer minus 1 which can only be an odd integer Yes or no? Is it fine? So this proves that the integral part of five plus two root six to the power n will always be odd. Now this question is a show that question, but it can always be objectified. So be aware of these kind of questions. Okay. So we'll take one more because this was just a demonstration for you all. So one more question we'll take up on this. So first make a note of this. <coughs> anywhere you want me to take the screen do let me know
Okay. All right. So let's take one more question. Ah, uh, can I move on to the next slide? By the way, if you are all done with this. Okay. Let's take. Thank you. Okay, let's take this question. Uh, show that the integral part of this expression is even. So this is a question which is slightly framed in a different way, but the end objective of the question is similar to what we had. You have to show that the integral part is an even number. Done. Done. Achintya is done. Awesome. Good, Arvind. Okay. So in this case, in this case, the approach is slightly different. Here again, if you see, this is root of one twenty five, isn't it? And 11 is like root of 121. So gap between them is lesser than one for sure. Correct. So let us first write this down as some I plus F. Okay. Where F is some fraction between zero to one. Okay. Now, now let's consider this term root five minus 11. Okay. To the power to N plus one. And as I told you, this term will be definitely be a fraction. So this will be somewhere between zero to one. Okay. Now this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract the result. Now what, what makes me subtract it? So see, I want to get rid of any kind of an irrationality and irrationality will come because of this five root five in the previous one. It came because of the second term here. It is coming because of the first term. Okay. So in order to remove those terms where the first term is having an odd power, we have to subtract the result. So you have to take this call when you are trying to solve this question, whether to add it or whether to subtract it, the uh, core principle, you know, uh, behind this would be to get rid of any irrational term or any term, which has got that irrational term as an odd power on it. Getting my point. All right. So if you remove it, please understand which terms will get doubled up. The first term will get canceled. The second term will double up. And what is the second term? What is the second term? Five, uh, 2n plus 1 c 1 5 root 5 to the power 2n into 11. Okay. Then the fourth term will double up, which is 2n plus 1 c 3 5 root 5 to the power of 2n minus 2 into 11 to the power of 2. Sorry, yeah, 11 to the power 3. Correct. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm not writing all the terms and on this side, you'll end up getting something like this. Okay. So each one of these terms here are integers. So this is also an integer. This is also an integer and da, 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 da. All these terms will be an integer. So the right side will be two into an integer. Okay. Left hand side, sorry, right hand side is this left hand side will be two into an integer. Sorry about mixing left and right. So left hand side is an even integer. Okay. And right hand side will be I plus F minus F dash. Okay. Now, whether even or not even it is an integer, right? And this is already an integer. So that means this guy should also be an integer. Correct. Now, if you subtract these two, 
So if you subtract these two from here, I can say F minus F dash should be between minus one to one. Check it out. Why minus one? Because let's say you have a value which is slightly less than one for F dash and slightly greater than zero or equal to zero for this guy. So then the difference will be minus one. And the max difference will be when this guy becomes very close to one and this guy becomes very close to zero. So the difference will be actually between minus one to one. So in light of this, can I say F minus F dash can be only be zero because the integer which is between minus one to one can only be zero. So this guy will be a zero, which means I is I plus zero is equal to an even integer. Okay. That means I is even. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Is it fine? Any questions? Okay. Would you like to try one more or is it good enough? <laughs> Depends upon your uh, understanding. Do you want one more question of this type or is it good enough? You tell me. Why is the left side even? Because two into an integer, it'll be an even integer. Because there will be a doubling of the terms. So yeah, yeah. I no need to say sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You're just clarifying your doubt. Okay. Um, chalo, since nobody is asking any uh, 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 thing, uh, nobody is saying anything, we'll take one more question. Okay. So let's take this one. Uh, if seven plus four root three to the power n is s plus t, okay, where n, where this n is a positive integer and s is also a positive integer. So they should actually write an i over here, but they have written an s. It's okay. So n and s both are positive integers, that means natural numbers, and t is a proper fraction. Show that one minus t into s plus t is one. One minus t into s plus t is one. Very simple, very straightforward question. Very similar to the first type that we did today. Yes.
Excellent. Two of you are done. Okay, great. See, again, the approach is very similar. I mean, if you take this as S plus T, okay. And let's take another term, 7 minus 4 root 3 to the power n. By the way, again, please note 4 root 3 is root of 48. 4 root 3 is root of 48, okay. And 7 is root of 49. So gap between them has to be a fraction. It cannot be more than 1. It cannot be equal to 1 also, right? So this will definitely be another fraction. Let's call it as t dash. And now since the irrationality is involved in the second term, you add them. That's how your irrationality will go off. So that is going to give you terms like this. Correct. Okay. So this is going to be an even integer. Okay. And this is going to be an integer plus this expression. And as I already told you, T lies between 0 to 1 and T dash also lies between 0 to 1. So their sum will lie between 0 to 2. The only integer which lies between 0 to 2 is a 1. Okay. That means, everybody please, please understand here. That means T plus T dash is 1. That means T dash is 1 minus T. So this 1 minus T here, you see, it's actually your T dash. Okay. So the question setter is asking you to prove that T dash, T dash, which is this term into S plus T, which is this term is actually a one, which is true. In fact, because 49 minus four root three square to the power of N is actually 49 minus 48 to the power of N, which is one to the power N, which is your right hand side. Getting this point. Okay. So this could also be objectified. They can ask you what is one minus T into one plus T, which of the following option you can always mark that. All right. Now one type of question, which is again, left off is your remainder type of question, remainder problems. Okay. So how does binomial theorem help us to solve remainder problems? So I'll just take a small, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> question over here. See, let's say, uh, I want to find out, let's say the question is find the remainder, find the remainder when I'll just take a example, let's say seven to the power hundred and, um, let's say, let's say seven to the power hundred. Okay. Find the remainder when this is divided by, this is divided by, by let's say 25. Okay. So how do we solve these kind of questions? Let us try to have a look into this. So there is a small process that we normally follow. Asha, by the way, those who have already done linear congruences, how many of you who prepared for a PRMO? when you were in grade 10 or nine have come across the concept of linear congruency. Anybody who knows linear congruency, the properties of linear congruency. No, nobody. Modulo. Yeah. Modulo. Yes. Tushar sir would have definitely taught you that. So if you are quite familiar with that, you can use it. Okay. But those who have not learned it for them, I'll be telling you the binomial theorem approach. Linear congruency, I will not be teaching you because again, it will take around half an hour, 45 minutes, which is definitely not required. See here, the process is we try to express this expression. Okay. As a to the power of B. Okay. Let it be multiplied by some number. Let's just see no problem where, where this expression or this base a is the nearest multiple of 25 plus minus one. Okay. If possible, if possible, I'm saying. If writing like this is not possible, then there is, you know, another way to, you know, solve this, but if possible, try to write your a, which is the base as a nearest multiple of 25 plus minus one. Okay. Now let me demonstrate that here. So in this case, can I write this guy as seven to the power two, which is 49 
to the power of 50. Correct? Where 49 is a nearest multiple, there is it's a multiple, so as to say, not a nearest one. It's a, it's a multiple of 25 minus 1. Okay. So I can write this as 50 minus 1 to the power 50. So what is the advantage of expressing it like this? So see, if you expand it, you'll get 50 to the power 50 minus 50 C1, 50 to the power 49 plus 50 C2 to the into 50 to the power 48, da, 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 da. And the last term will become a plus one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, just let me write the term before it. So it'll be minus 50 C49 into 50. Okay. Now see here. Till here, all the terms are divisible by 50. And hence, and hence divisible by 25 also, because anything which is divisible by 50 will also be divisible by 25. So can I not write this as 25 lambda plus one? In other words, can I say the remainder that you will be getting when you divide that expression by 25 is going to be one. <clears throat> is it fine? Any questions? Any questions? Any concerns? Any questions? Any concerns? It's clear. Okay. All right. So let's take this question. I mean, a rhyming question with this. Okay. The question is find the remainder, find the remainder when 17 to the power of 256 is divided by is divided by 10. Find the remainder when 17 to the power 256 is divided by 10. Done. Okay. <laughs> Satyam, very good. See, by the way, uh, when somebody asks you what is the remainder when you're dividing it by 10, he's actually asking you the last digit. Okay. So most of you would be aware that when you're finding the last digit of such kind of an expression, we divide the power by four. Okay. And whatever remainder comes from there other than zero. Okay. If a zero remainder comes, when you divide this guy by a four, then you use a four and you raise that number to or on this last digit. For example, let's say 256. Okay. 
when you divide 256 by 4 what do you get zero correct that means raise 7 to the power 4 whatever is the last digit of that that is going to be your answer and 7 to the power 4 the last digit will be i mean something one okay so this will be your remainder plain and simple that's one way to look into it fine and let's say if you want to solve it by our binomial approach so as i told you write this guy as something which is a multiple of this number plus or minus one so the best answer the best way to write is 289 289 comes from 17 square correct i'm so sorry this is 128 yeah so 289 is a multiple of 10 minus 1 correct and when you expand it you get 290 to the power 128 minus 128 c1 290 to the power 127 128 c2 290 to the power 126 da 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 da, da. the last term will be i mean the penultimate term would be negative 128 c127 times 290 and the last term will be one okay plus one remember plus one now the sign here matters okay if it was a minus one things will change how it will change i'll tell you now all these terms here till here they will be a multiple of 290 correct and hence it will be a multiple of 10 that means it will be some 10 alpha plus one which means the remainder is going to be a one here again. Okay. Now, many students ask me, sir, uh, what will happen if your last, this guy is not getting formed, what to do? Okay. I will talk about that also. Okay. But let me also tell you what will happen if this number was minus one. If remember, if this number was minus one, your remainder would be who will tell me? Let's say there was a minus one. Then the remainder would be nine. Exactly. So please note that if you, at, let's say hypothetically speaking, if you get a number of this nature, then what do you have to do? You have to release a 10 from here. So that number nine will become your remainder. Not minus one. Never write a remainder as a negative number. Remainder is always from zero till one less than that number. Okay. So it can never be a negative. It can never be equal to the divisor. It can never exceed the divisor. That is for sure. Right. But let's say if this kind of a scenario comes, your remainder is going to be nine. Your remainder is going to be nine. Are you getting my point? Okay. Now I'll be taking a small question for you, which uh, just give me a second. Is that question? Yeah. Seven to the power hundred when divided by ninety. Yeah. Yes. So let's take this question. Find the remainder. Find the remainder. Find the remainder when 7 to the power 100 is divided by is divided by hmm. I, yo, I have such a short memory. <laughs> what was it? Divided by 13. 13. Okay. Yeah. Huh. 
ha it will be divisor minus 1 that depends upon what you are dividing but in our example it was 9 that is what i was trying to say okay yes so in this case how do you solve this question find the remainder when 7 to the power 10 is divided by 13 now here i don't know whether you are trying it or not but however you try you will not be able to express 7 to the power 100 as some base which is a multiple of 13 plus minus 1 you may try it out let's say if you take 7 to the power 2 okay so it's 49 right 49 is not a multiple of 3 plus minus 1 you can try it out okay if you take 7 to the power 3 which happens to be uh, 243 right right 7 to the power 3 343 that also you will not be able to write okay check it out i mean be first convince yourself okay so how do we deal in such cases so what do we do here let us write this as 7 uh square to the power 50 okay so this is actually 49 to the power 50 okay so uh, 49 to the power 50 if i write it as a multiple of 13 so what is uh, what is this uh, 13 to the power 4 52 right so can i write it as 52 minus 3 to the power 50 correct okay so if i write 52 minus 3 to the power 50 you'll end up getting 50 c0 52 to the power 50 then you'll get minus 50 c1 52 to the power 49 into 3 okay then plus 50 c2 52 to the power of 48 into 3 square okay and da 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 till last term is 50 c 49 52 to the power of um 1 into 3 to the power of <coughs> 3 to the power of 49 and the last term that will be left of by the way there will be a negative sign here okay and the last term that will be left of will be 3 to the power 50 right now the problem here is till here everything is divisible by 52 and hence and hence divisible by 13 also so you have something like 13 lambda plus 3 to the power 50 right so here the this term is not a simple term it's it's a huge number so now your problem comes your problem simplifies to you finding the remainder from 3 to the power 50 because whatever remainder comes from this term that will be your remainder of the original question also because other terms are not going to give a remainder so the problem you know boils down or simplifies to finding the remainder what is the remainder when when 3 to the power 50 is divisible by 13 okay let's find it out now here the things will be slightly on the easier side the reason me you can write 3 to the power 3 as 27 which is 2 into 13 plus 1 okay now see what i'm i'm going to do so i'm going to break this 3 to the power 50 like 3 to the power 2 into 3 to the power 48 3 to the power 2 is 9 and this 48 i will write it as 3 into 16 something like this now this 27 term is nothing but 26 plus 1 okay now don't worry if a 9 comes here that is fine i can manage with that 9 but i just want to get this as a multiple of 13 plus or minus 1 which i was successful in doing 
So when you expand this, you end up getting 26 to the power 16. Next term will be 16 C1, 26 to the power 15. Then the next term will be 16 C2, 26 to the power 14, da, 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 da. The last term is going to be a plus one, okay? So overall, you end up getting something like this. Uh, it'll go up till this term plus a nine, plus a nine. Yes or no? So till here, everything will be divisible by 13. In fact, everything will be divisible by 26. So it will be divisible by 13 as well. Correct. Let's say I call it as alpha and you'll be left with a nine. That means nine will be your remainder. So the answer to that original question also is going to be nine only. So what is the remainder when this is divisible by 13? The answer for this question will also be nine. Got it. Okay. So maybe in one go, you will not get the answer, but you have to again, take the remainder over here and again, work in the same way. And it may take more than two iterations also. So be prepared for it. Is it fine? What was the process adopted to solve this question? Done. Okay. So with this, we are now going to start with. Ha, huh, that's the point Satyam. Uh, the bigger the uh, you know left part is taken, you know, see, it depends upon your understanding. Let's say you have taken 10. Okay. The last term would have been 10 to the power something. Now from there, you have to write it as again, a nearest multiple of as a multiple of 13 plus minus one. And it is up to you to do that. So whether you write a 10, whether you write a, a you know, whatever number there, you have to face the brunt of this last term that you're going to get that is three to the power 50. So you will end up getting 10 to the power some power. So you should be able to write again that 10 to the power as a multiple of 13 plus minus one form. If you're able to do that, go ahead with your approach. So there's nothing right or wrong in that. And if you start with that, it may take multiple iterations. Okay. So that is what you have to take into your consideration. All right. So we are now going to go towards our binomial coefficient series. In fact, we'll take one question on binomial coefficient properties. So the question goes like this in the expression X plus Y to the power N, the second term is given to you as 240. Third term is given to you as 720 and fourth term is given to you as 1080. Okay. Find the value of X, Y, and N. Okay. N being some whole number. In the expression X plus Y to the power N, the second term is 240. Third term is 720. Fourth term is 1080. Term means the value of the term, the whole value. So you have to find the value of X, Y, and N.
Yes. Anybody? See, what will be T2? T2 is T1 plus 1, right? So that will be NC1, X to the power N minus 1, Y to the power 1, right? So this is given to us as 240. Correct? Similarly, T3 will be T2 plus 1, which is nothing but NC2, X to the power N minus 2, Y square. T4 will be T3 plus 1, which is NC3, X to the power N minus 3, Y cube. Okay. So these values are given to us. Okay. Let's call them as 1, 2, and 3. Right. Let us divide 2 by 1. So when you divide 2 by 1, you get NC2 by NC1 into y by x, which is going to be 3. Let's call it as 4. And you divide 3 by 2. So that will give you nc3 by nc2 into y by x, which is nothing but now 1080 by 720 will be 3 divided by 2. Okay, let's call it as 4. Oh, very good, Harshita. Harshita has got n value. Great. Uh, okay, we'll check Satyam. Good try. Okay, now having got this, please understand here that NC2 by NC1. Now, which formula we, we, are, we are going to use, which property we are going to use? NCR by NCR minus 1, which is N minus R plus 1 by R. Okay, so this times Y by X is 3. And this is going to be n minus 3 plus 1 by 3 times y by x. That is going to be 3 by 2. Okay. Take the ratio of these two as well. So that is going to give you n minus 1 by n minus 2. And I think 3 by 2 will come here. That is going to be a 2. Okay. So what I'm going, I'm just doing 4 divided by 5. Correct me if I'm wrong. Which means... 3n minus 1 is 4n minus 2. Okay. Which clearly means n value is going to be a 5. Check it out. Okay. So n value comes out to be a 5. Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. So once n value comes out to be 5, you put it in. Put this in fourth equation. Okay. So here, if you put n value as five, you'll end up getting five minus one, which is four, four by two times y by x is equal to three, which means y is equal to three by two x. Correct. Y is equal to three by two x. Now put this in your first equation. Equation number one. So put this in one. So as per one, NC1, which is 5C1. Okay, so let me write that again down. NC1, X to the power N minus 1, Y to the power 1. NC1 is 5. And this is going to be 4. Y is 3 by 2 X. That is 240. Which clearly means 5C1, X to the power 5. Uh, that will be 480 by 3, which is 160. Correct. And 5C1 is 5, so it will be 32. 32. That means X value is a 2. If X value is a 2, Y value is a 3. So there you go. X value, Y value are all now you know, out. So answer is going to be N is 5, X is 2, Y is 3. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. So this is a very, very basic type of question and it comes a lot in your competitive exams also. Uh, but this is not a J main type of question. 
you can count this as a regional entrance exam type of question so with this we are now going to start with our binomial coefficient series questions okay so let's start binomial coefficient series i hope everybody had copied the previous uh, solution and nobody had any doubt so let's start with binomial coefficient series okay and of course uh, you will not be getting very simple question based on the same so let me begin with uh, you know one of the coefficient binomial coefficient series question uh, let's say we take this question okay it's a proof that question but it can always be objectified by the way many people have this feeling sir if it is always if it is an objective question then i can always substitute the value of you know n and get my answers right in any type of series question this is the normal feeling everybody gets isn't it but let me tell you if you are smart the j or nta is smarter okay so do they know that this problem can be solved by merely substituting the value of n whatever is you know required to sum up and you can always match with the options so what they normally do in order to avoid people using these approaches they will say that this expression is some function of n like that they will give you and they will say what is the limit of that function as n tends to 5 or as n tends to you know infinity or maybe they will say what is the integration from uh, you know with, with respect to n from this value to this value anything they can do with that okay so please do not depend upon the approach of you substituting of course if it works why not use it if it works i am not uh, asking anybody to not you know uh, take that method but if it doesn't work then you should be ready with these you know concepts as well okay now let me start with this question uh, as a sample question to begin with see here they have given that there is a particular series 1 plus x to the power n whose expansion they have written like this by the way most of you would be wondering why did not they write nc0 like this nc0 nc1 nc2 etc see ideally yes they should have written it but normally this n since it is present everywhere and it is understood it is very obvious that it is going to be n because the power here is n so they sometimes drop that particular n they don't write it in fact they start writing ncr as cr just to save their time okay and you will find this particular you know methodology used in many questions also they will say let ncr be cr okay just to save their typing effort so now we have to sum up this particular series let's say i am not aware of my answer okay i am thinking that this answer is hidden from me so what i need to find out what is nc0 2 into nc sorry nc1 not nc0 nc1 so what is nc1 2 into nc2 3 into nc3 etc till n into ncn till n into ncn okay let's find out this they have already given the answer so we have to just match our answer with that particular expression but please understand here uh, do not try to solve these kind of questions always by substitution of the value of n even though that is a shorter way to do it but unless until i mean you are doing it in an exam where they allow you to do it always go always you know for a practice purpose do it in a proper way okay so how do you find this how do you solve this question now there are two ways to solve this question one is by using your binomial coefficient properties which you have learned and the second is is by the use of calculus so some of you are already use uh, some of you are already aware that we can use calculus for this purpose so i'll start with a non calculus approach first okay non calculus means just by the use of your binomial coefficient properties okay so how will it work see you are actually trying to find out let's say i call this as s okay let's say sn whatever you want to call it so your sn is nothing but you are trying to sum up r into n c r from r equal to uh you can say 0 to n isn't it it will not be wrong to start with 0 right because anyway zeros first term only when you put 0 it will be 0 only okay so how do you solve this question now we have already seen that n c r is n by r into n minus 1 c r minus 1 correct 
So from here, can I say R into N C R is N into N minus one C R minus one? Can I say this? So this term that you are having here, it can be further replaced with N into N minus one C R minus one R equal to zero to one. Right? Yes or no? Now please note. R equal to zero doesn't make sense over here because there is nothing like n minus one c minus one. So you can actually write a one over here, which anyways did not disturb your summation value because anyways R zero was a zero. So let's start with R one only. Okay. So it is going to be summed up from R equal to one till R equal to n. Correct. Now write this n outside because your summation is applied to R, not to n. n is a fixed value isn't it so n will come out it will not participate in your summation process right and you will be left with something like this okay now think as if you are trying to sum n minus 1 c0 n minus 1 c1 all the way till n minus 1 c n minus 1 what is this actually what is this actually this term 2 to the power n minus 1 isn't it So please recall we had done in our properties that if you sum up all the binomial coefficients from n c zero to n c n, it becomes two to the power n. Instead of now n, if you put n minus one, correct? This will become also n minus one, correct? And that's where is your answer? This is your R H S. Okay, hence proved. So this is your sum. Okay, but let me tell you, this process. is not the most convenient way to solve the question in fact if given an option i will not solve this question by this approach but this is just to make you realize that this process is slightly cumbersome and there is a easier process waiting for you which is our next process or next method to solve it which is by the use of calculus okay so let us go to that method but if you want to note this down please do so i just write b no here so that we can as when we refer to the notes we can have a look at it okay i personally do not like this method okay so <laughs> i'll be giving you method number 2 which is called your calculus method non calculus method and calculus method okay so everybody has copied this down nobody, nobody has any question any concerns okay great so now again in the calculus method uh let's start with our given expression this was given to us uh by the way again i, I will also not write that n on the top i'll directly write c0 c1x c2x square C three x cube da 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 till C n x to the power. N. Okay. Now here, if you see the question very carefully, you realize that these binomial coefficients are preceded by some number. Okay. For example, one C one. If nothing is there, you can say one C one. Okay. Two C two, three C three, etc. Now that number which is preceding this binomial coefficient are actually the powers of x that you see in this particular expansion. Now, which process in calculus? helps you to bring down that power down you will say it's a derivative if you differentiate such terms these powers are going to jump down and whatever will be left will be one less than that power isn't it so here in light of that again this is something which has come from our observation so if you differentiate with respect to x on both the sides the left hand side will become n1 plus x to the power n minus 1 okay This is going to become a zero. This is going to become one c one. This is going to become two c two x, three c three x square, and this goes on and on till n c n x to the power n minus one. Okay, 
Is it fine? Right? Now, in order to make this x vanish from both the sides, put x as a 1. So when you do that on the left hand side, you get n 1 plus 1 to the power n minus 1, whereas the right hand side will give you 1 times c1, 2 times c2, 3 times ct. In short, it gives you the required series. That means the required series becomes n 2 to the power n minus 1. And that's what we wanted to prove. That's what we wanted to prove. Is it fine? I personally find this approach or I, I personally feel that this approach is going to be much, much faster. So uh, when the problems become complicated, uh, the first approach, the non-calculus approach will increasingly become more complicated. But this approach, the calculus approach basically is a easier way, you know, to get your answer. Is it fine? Any questions? So which of the two methods you prefer using? The first one or the second one? I'm sure second one is the one which most of you would like to use. <laughs> okay, let's take more questions. Let's take more questions. Then uh, we will understand the utility of the second approach. This will be the first one. So in the last question, we had taken... Uh, C1 plus 2 C2. This is a slightly different one. Here you have to prove that. In fact, don't look at the result. Don't look at the result. Uh, just look at finding the value of C0, 2 C1, 3 C2. Da, 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 till n plus 1 C n. So everybody do this and let me know with a done on the chat box. Yes, anybody analyze the expression first carefully, then you'll come to know which, which approach is going to help you out. Okay. Harshita, uh, very good. Anybody else? Okay, Arvind also done, Ashintya also done. Okay, that is one way to do it. See, again, I will use calculus approach here. Okay. 
Now, as you can see here, uh, the coefficient of the coefficient, that means the term which is along with the binomial coefficient, is actually one more than the power of x that you have here, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first multiply this expression with an x. Okay. So I'm just literally multiplying every term with an x. So this will become this. Correct. Now differentiate both sides with respect to x. Okay. Now, uh, Harshita, what you're saying is when you remember the previous result, let's say this question comes as a standalone question. Will you carry that baggage of remembering those results before you solve this? Right. So I'm solving it as if there was no, you know, prior art to this. Okay. Something that some result prior to this was not known to us. Okay. Okay. So when you differentiate with respect to X here, please note that you're going to use the product rule over here. So let's differentiate X first, keeping this guy as it is, then differentiate the, the second term, which is N one plus X to the power N minus one. And of course, derivative of one plus X will be zero, uh, uh, one itself. Okay. On the right side, you'll get C zero, two C one X, three C two X square, da, 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 till N plus one C N X to the power N. Okay. Now put your X value as a one, just to make the X vanish from the right side. So that will give you two to the power N over here. And this will give you N two to the power N minus one. And on the right side, you'll end up getting the required series. Isn't it? And on simplification, if you take two to the power n minus one common, it will give you n plus two. Okay, so that is your right hand side. Hence proof. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns with respect to this? Okay, as is just as a, as an exercise. Okay, for homework. Try to solve this without using calculus. That means using a binomial coefficient series. Okay, just try it for a homework. It would be a good exercise for you. Okay, so try to solve this question without using calculus. Uh, for your January 30th uh, monthly test, all these things will be tested there. Okay. All right. Should we move on to the next one? Okay. Let's try this one out. Again, it's a proof that question, but try not to look at the right hand side. Uh, think as if the question is asking you to find the sum of the series C zero plus yeah, C zero plus why it has come down. Right. Something is ah, not its fault. Yeah. C zero plus three C one plus five C two da 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 till two N plus one C N.
Yes. Any idea how to do this? Look at this term. This has a lot of things to say. 2n plus 1. 2n plus 1. Okay, Arvind. Good. Arvind thinks he knows. Okay, try it out, Harshita. See whether it works. Whatever you are thinking, or by the way, whatever uh, any one of you is thinking, please implement it. See whether it leads to your desired result. Okay, done. Good. See here, uh, I just like to bring your attention. If you want to double of this, okay, it's actually double of the double of the power plus one, right? Okay. So when you have been given this, you can do a small change here. Instead of x, write an x square. Okay. This will automatically double up the powers, isn't it? See. To the power four, da, 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 till c n to the power two n. Okay. Now doubling up is okay, not sufficient. It is important, but not sufficient. I have to have a double up plus one. So what I'll do is multiply with x. Correct. So that not only doubles up, but adds a one to that doubled up term like this. Okay. Now bring that power down by differentiating with respect to x. Okay, so differentiate with respect to x both sides, and because of that, so what will happen over here? See, uh, just use the product rule over here. So one plus x square to the power n derivative of x is one. Then keep x as it is. This derivative will be n one plus x square to the power n minus one into two x. Don't forget this two x, right? Because derivative of one plus x square is zero plus two x. And on the right side, you'll end up getting something like this. Da 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 till two n plus one c n x to the power two n. Is it fine? Any questions? Now you want the x to vanish, so put x as one. Okay. So when you do that, the left hand side becomes two to the power n one into n into two to the power n minus one into two. C zero plus three C one five C two da 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 till two n plus one C n. Yes or no? So this is as good as n into two to the power n take two to the power n common, and this is the result which we wanted to get. This is our right hand side. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Any questions? Any concerns? Do let me know. Okay. Let's take this question now for a change. One plus x to the power of n is c zero c one x c two x square da 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 till c n x to the power n. Then prove that. Then prove that. This series is going to be this. Now, there's a small change. Earlier, the coefficients used to have those numbers which you see in the denominators multiplied to it. Now, those numbers are getting; those numbers are basically dividing those coefficients. So, think which process in calculus brings that power down? 
In fact, one more than that power down. And I'm sure you are aware of that process. Integration. Absolutely right, Vishal. Okay, anybody done? Okay, now let me tell you something which the students normally do in the beginning. Okay, so let's say there's a student who does this. Okay, so he already knows that this is your given result. Now, in order to get these numbers down, he integrates both side with respect to x okay so i'm just writing that uh, expression down by the way okay so i'm assuming that you all have been introduced to integration to a certain extent in your physics you know subject Okay, so this is going to be something like this. Da, 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 till Cn x to the power n plus one by n plus one. Okay. Now, if I put a one on both the sides, put x as one on both the sides, you'll end up getting two to the power n plus one by n plus one. And on this side, you'll get C zero, C one by two. C2, this is C2, sorry, not C3, C2. C2 by 3, C3 by 4, da 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 till Cn by n plus 1. Okay. Now I see here that on in the answer, they don't have what I have got. They have got 2 to the power n plus 1 minus 1 by n plus 1, whereas I have got 2 to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1. Where is that minus 1 gone? So what mistake have I committed over here? Can you repeat how to integrate? Okay. All right. So if you're integrating, x to the power n this answer everybody knows what is the answer to this x to the power n plus one by n plus one Correct. okay i found this on the web for x to the power yeah correct so if you have one plus x to the power n what do you do very simple you put one plus x as a t that's another variable so when one plus x is t you differentiate both sides with respect to x so your dx becomes dt, correct? So this integration becomes 1 plus x to the power n, which is t to the power n. And instead of dx, you can write dt. So the approach is same. You'll end up getting t to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1. And t is something which is 1 plus x. Okay, so this is how you end up getting. So that's why I wrote this result. 1 plus x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1. Fine. Any doubt with respect to that result? Okay. Now, this result which I have used, okay, and I have put x as 1, I ended up getting this. So, what is the mistake here which I am making? 
it's not a mistake in the you know this answer but there is something which i am missing out i would like to know from you the constant of integration exactly satyam so the mistake which i made was i did not put a constant of integration which ideally i should have put right after my integration this is where i keep telling my students and to you as well that whenever you are performing an indefinite integration do not forget this constant of integration if you are taking this lightly okay because in 12th when i do this chapter many students are like you know sir why to put that c you know just waste our time and all see it's not a waste of time your entire result will become faulty if you are not putting that c okay so because of missing that c my result did not come as expected okay so things were wrong because i did not put my c value so this all thing was not going to make sense okay now once i have put this c i have to find this c value out so for that you put x value as a zero on both the sides so when you put x value as zero on both the sides you will end up getting something like this correct which clearly makes your constant of integration as negative 1 upon n plus 1 okay so put this back over here fine so your result becomes 1 plus x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 minus 1 by n plus 1 and that is nothing but c0 x c1 x square by 2 c2 x cube by 3 da 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 da, da till cn x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1 okay now here put your x value as a 1 so when you do that you it this becomes 2 to the power n plus 1 By n plus one minus one by n plus one, so you can take a minus one like this. Is it fine? And on the right side, you'll get c zero, c one by two, c two by three, da 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 da, till till c n by n plus one. Okay, and that is what we wanted to prove. okay an alternative approach here would be to integrate it from 0 to 1 okay so that is also another way to do it i hope you know how to perform definite integral when the limits of integration is given to you that could also be used okay so if you don't want to put a 0 then a 1 etc you can do it in one shot so right here you can do it integration so alternately you can perform here let me write alternately you can do the integration from 0 to 1 of this expression that also will give you a direct result one shot you don't have to put a constant of integration there and all there is uh, actually called reverse chain rule there is no chain rule there is a reverse chain rule and i think you were there in the class uh, which i have conducted during the bridge course so those who are claiming that they don't know integration <laughs> satya and all you were very much there in the in our in our bridge course class okay so have a revisit of the bridge course class okay you will you'll get all the answers to the question that you are asking so 1 plus x to the power n and all we all did there <laughs> yeah is it fine any questions any concerns with this approach kindly let me know okay all right let's try one more where integration is involved okay um this is easy
okay can you try this one okay slightly complicated looking <laughs> so we have to find the sum of these series in fact we have to prove that or show that the sum of the series 2 square by 1 into 2 c0 by the way this is 1 into 2 not 1 1 point 2 this is 1 into 2 plus 2 cube by 2 into 3 c1 plus 2 to the power 4 3 into 4 c2 da, 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 da. tell 2 to the power n plus 2 cn by n plus 1 n plus 2 is equal to this expression everybody please try this out talking in such a loud tone okay see again first forget about this 2 square 2 cube 2 4 etc that we can manage how are we getting this 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, etc.? Right, Vishal. We need to integrate this thing twice. Okay. Okay, so we have already known this result. So I'll not be starting from scratch, actually. I'll be starting from this result, which we have already figured out in the previous slide. Okay. I think this was x, this was x squared. Then c2 by 3 x cubed. Da, 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 till cn by n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1. Okay. Now, in order to bring 3 here, 4 here, in fact, in order to bring 2 here, we need to integrate once more. That everybody agrees. So, this was the result. This was our previous result. Okay. And you need to remember this because you can't you know, do the same obvious step again and again. Okay. So this was the result which we had done in our previous slide. So here now again integrate with respect to x once again. Sorry, this was n plus 1. Yeah. Yeah. Integrate this with respect to x once again. Till cn by n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1 dx. Okay. Okay. So let's see what happens to the left hand side. The left hand side will become, if I'm not mistaken, 1 by n plus 1 will be taken as a common. Integration of this is going to be, uh, let me remove the integration sign because now we are just integrating. So it's 1 plus x to the power n plus 2 by n plus 2 minus x. Am I right? 
so see the constant term i took it outside okay it's like you know i brought this term i brought the 1 by n plus 1 outside okay now i integrated this guy 1 plus x to the power n plus 1 which is 1 plus x to the power n plus 2 divided by n plus 2 by the same logic and minus 1 integration is x okay immediately put a constant of integration the moment you are integrating it and this is going to become c0 x square by 2 so can i write that 2 as 1 into 2 same here c1 x cube by 2 into 3 correct then c2 x4 by 3 into 4 Da 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 till c n x to the power n plus two by n plus one n plus two. Am I right? Now before I put my see, I am almost there. It's just that my x is to be now replaced with a two. Okay, but before I make that replacement, I need to first figure out what is this constant of integration. For that, put x as zero. So when you put x as zero on the left hand side, you'll end up getting. One by n plus two, okay. This will be anyways be a zero, and this will be zero, okay. Which clearly means your c is negative one upon n plus one n plus two. So put this back over here. Put that back over there, okay. So this is going to simplify to one by n plus one, one plus x to the power n plus two by n plus two minus x. Minus one by n plus one n plus two. Okay, so this is your c zero x square by one into two, c one x cube by two into three. Da 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 da. Till your c n x to the power n plus two by n plus one n plus two. Okay, now put your x value as a two. Put your x value as a two. Okay, so when you do that. The left hand side will become one by uh, n plus one times three to the power n plus two by n plus two minus two minus one by n plus one n plus two. Okay, that would be a required series. Okay, now all I need to do is simplify this. So let us do that. Why to waste? So here, what I am going to do, I am going to just uh, take the LCM. So that is going to be three to the power n plus two minus two n minus four upon n plus one n plus two, and there is a minus one with the same base, so I can just do a minus one on top, which is going to make this as a minus five. Is this what we wanted to prove? Check three to the power n plus two. Yeah, three to the power n plus two minus two n minus five by n plus one n plus two. is it fine any questions any concerns any questions any concerns Okay, good enough. Okay, so in the series binomial coefficient series, we are now going to see next type of problem where you need some typical substitutions. Okay, to solve them. So let me expose you to few such problems. uh but before that have you all copied this down any questions any concerns any kasta no kasta okay all are happy all right so let's take another type of problems which require typical substitutions okay uh let's take this question 
if 1 plus x to the power n is this, which is our regular series, no need to even look at it. Find the values of these series. Now, this time I have not given you any uh, answer to this. So it's a finding value. So find what is C0 minus C2 plus C4 minus 6. Da, 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 da. Right? So let's do the first one. Then we'll see the subsequent ones. Mind you, this is not C0 plus C2 plus C4. If it was plus in between, then I would have got just 2 to the power n minus 1, which I already know. Okay. So here there's an alternating sign also. And they're jumping from one. They're just leaving one coefficient and jumping to the other like that. So how do you do this kind of a problem? Uh, do you want to try this out first? Please try this out. Take an attempt. See what to do. Think, think, think. See, uh, we cannot give you all the types possible. So there will always be some type which will make you think. What to do, how to do, let us think about it. Okay, see here, all of you. One very useful substitution in such cases is putting your x value as i. Yes, the same i that you came across in complex numbers. Okay. So complex numbers is not going to leave you. Okay, so let's put x as i. Right? We all know i, iota. Okay. So when you make that substitution, you'll end up getting something like this C0, C1i, C2i square is nothing but minus C2, then minus C3i, then C4, then C5i, correct? Then minus C6, dot, 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 correct? Now, write the terms with i in them separately and write the terms without i, sorry, with i and without i separately. So this is what I'll be getting. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Yes or no? Now, if you see question number one, let me call this as S1. Let's call this series as S1. Do you see that S1 is coming over here? And let's call the second question, that is your you know, second part of the question is S2. Do you see S2 coming here? So in one shot, I can find the answers to both first and the second part. How? Just comparing the real part on left and right, because this is acting like a real part of the left hand side. And this is nothing but the imaginary part of your left hand side. Correct. So if you find out the real part of one plus i to the power n, an imaginary part of 1 plus i to the power n, you automatically get your series, isn't it? So how do you get the real part? Very simple. Now everybody recall, everybody recall that you had already done that 1 plus i in polar form. How do you write it in the polar form? Root 2 cos pi by 4 plus i sine by pi by 4. Everybody remembers that complex numbers. Please revise all these things because they are going to be tested. So if I raise it to a integral power by de Moivre's theorem, which theorem? Which theorem? De Moivre's theorem. I'm trying to you know pronounce it correctly. 
demoverest serum i can write it like this correct in short what i'm trying to say is that your left hand side is 2 to the power n by 2 cos n pi by 4 plus i 2 to the power n by 2 sin n pi by 4 okay and that is nothing but s1 plus i s2 so your s1 that is nothing but c0 minus c2 plus c4 da 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 that is nothing but 2 to the power n by 2 cos n pi by 4 right quite surprising that in the binomial coefficient sum you are getting a trigonometric ratio right yes it is quite surprising and if you compare your uh, imaginary components that is c1 minus c3 plus c5 da 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 da, da it is going to be 2 to the power n by 2 sin n pi by 4 now many people ask me sir is this result required to be remembered uh um, in my experience i have seen these type of questions uh being a part of a bigger problem okay so if you happen to remember it well and good but if you don't happen to remember it it's fine because uh, such questions have come in the past i agree but they are not very you know frequent that means the same type of question coming let's say every third year or fourth year in competitive exams uh that is very rare but yes they might come okay so it is up to you it is up to what your memory allows you i am not imposing any memorization here is it fine any questions any concerns do let me know okay now having shown you the path to do such kind of questions i would request everybody to try the third one out which i think i have not done okay so the first and the second part are done in this the third part i am going to ask you to do it so let me go to the next slide and post the question again so that we have enough space to work on it but is everything clear over here how to write this in polar form how to write it how to use de moivre's theorem okay because n is an integer over here i mean in fact it's a natural a whole number here its whole number are integers only so how to use de moivre's theorem and how to just find out the sum of your series by using the comparison of the real part and the imaginary part now these things will not come to you from day one you have to keep practicing you have to keep applying you have to keep thinking laterally okay okay so if you have copied this down time for us to do the next third part which i am again going to write it down where was the question where was the question where was the question where was the question yeah. okay let's do the third part and i would give you some time to think on it and let me know if you have got a breakthrough anybody who has got a breakthrough in the third part just let me know what you have done to solve that problem very good vishal i think you are on the right track
Oh my God, Satyam, <laughs> that's too complicated a substitution. See here uh, again. Let's start with our given series. Okay, so this is C zero, C one x, C two x square, C three x cube. Let me write it till few more terms. C five x to the power five, C six x to the power six. Okay, da 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 da. Okay. Now putting one, we already know the result. Putting one, we already know the result. That is C zero, C one, C two, C three, C four, C five, C six till C n is going to be two to the power n. Okay. So this is when you put x as one. Now put x as omega. Okay, the complex cube root of unity. So when you put omega, you end up getting c zero, c one omega, c two omega square, c three omega cube, which is back to c three. Okay, c four omega, c five omega square. Okay, c six omega six is back to c six. Okay. Then put x as omega square. Then put x as omega square. So when you make this substitution, you end up getting c zero, c one omega square, c two omega four. C two omega four is c two omega again, because omega to the power four is omega. Okay. Then c three omega to the power six, which is back to c three. This is c four omega to the power of eight. So omega to the power of eight is omega square. Okay. C five omega to the power of ten, which is omega only. C six omega to the power twelve, which is C six only. Okay. Now add the three series that you have written. Add the three series you have written. That means two to the power n, one plus omega to the power n, and one plus omega square to the power n. See what you will see here that this will be C zero C zero C zero three times. Okay. Three C zero. Correct. This will be take c one common, and you would realize that you will end up getting something like one plus omega plus omega square into c one, and this guy is a zero, so it will kill all the terms, right? So this will be a zero. Same will be happening for this term also zero, right? Because one plus omega plus omega square will come as a common term, and you have c three c three c three, which is three c three again. Similarly, this will be zero. This will be zero, and you will have three times c six. Da 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 da. In short, you end up getting three times the given series. That means your s is one third of two to the power n one plus omega to the power n one plus omega square to the power n. Correct. But it's not a good practice. To leave your answer in terms of omega and omega square, given that the entire series is basically consisting, I'm so sorry. Given that this entire series is consisting of all, you know, non-real terms, right? So let us try to see whether this comes out to be actually a term which is real in nature. I don't want any omega omega square to appear in our answer. So let us do us a small simplification here. See. We all know your omega value. Omega value is minus half plus i root three by two. Correct. So one plus omega will be what? One plus omega will be nothing but half plus i root three by two. As a complex number in polar form, can I write it as pi by three plus i sine pi by three? Correct. So one plus omega to the power n, can I write it as cos n pi by three plus i sine n pi by three? Anybody has any objection with this? Do let me know. No objection. If there is an objection, then objection overruled. <laughs> Objection over rule, my lord. Okay, next. <laughs> we already know omega square value. Uh, let me write that first. Then we'll add a one. Omega square value is minus half minus i root three by two. Correct. So one plus omega square will be what? Half minus i root three by two. Okay. If I am not mistaken, this is actually cos pi by. Three minus i sine pi by three. Am I right? 
so if we raise it to the power of n can i say by de moivre's theorem this is going to become this agreed any objection to this no objection okay so if there is no objection let us try to use that result over here so it's 1/3 2 to the power n and this term is cos n pi by 3 plus i sin n pi by 3 and the other term is cos n pi by 3 let me write it in white minus i sin n pi by 3 now automatically you will see the i related terms will get cancelled off thereby giving your answer to be 1/3 of 2 to the power n plus twice of cos n pi by 3 this is your answer is it fine any questions any concerns do let me know clear happy now if you are a j advanced aspirant and let's say the question setter gives you this question he may put both the options in your option list okay so be aware of both the versions of the result don't be like okay i will only know this in fact there is nothing to remember it's all about you know uh, figuring it out now the next type of question which comes in this is called binomial within binomial so we'll take that up and maybe then we'll take a small break because it's already 6 o'clock so let me move on to the next type of question which is called binomial within binomial okay now to understand this concept i will be taking a small question okay let's take a small question to begin with let's say i want to find out <clears throat> i want to find out c0 i mean when i say c0 n c0 it means okay minus n c1 2 to the power n minus 2 cn plus n c2 2 to the power n minus 4 c n again okay minus and this process goes on and on okay let's say the question is find the sum of this series so as you can see the first term is nc0 2 ncn okay so these two terms are multiplied then we have minus nc1 2n minus 2 in 2n minus 2cn then plus nc2 2n minus 4c4 and this continues on okay how do you find this expression what is this equal to is what we are looking for any idea how to solve this think how can you get this result again this is not meant for j main this is actually a slightly heavier concept maybe they can ask you in kvpy okay or j advanced but still i would like everybody to think over it how to solve this see first of all few observations i can see these are your normal nc0 nc1 nc2 etc okay that is one observation that you have second thing that you see these terms 
have alternating positive negative signs so there is a negative then there is a positive then there is a negative okay this is another observation third observation i can see there is a uh, you know constantly n n over here even though the subscript is sorry superscript is changing in the uh, subscript there is an n n okay now in light of this i have a small you can say suggestion over here can i say this term this term is the coefficient of just the first term okay coefficient of x to the power n x to the power n in in 1 plus x to the power of 2n okay minus 1 i mean uh, let me just write it down for the first term i will not write it for the other terms so i'm just trying to say that this first term is the coefficient of let me just remove this minus one. is the coefficient of x to the power n in this term n c 0 into 1 plus x to the power 2n do you all agree with me on on that or not okay everybody agrees the second term let me write that also the second term is the coefficient of x to the power n in n c 1 1 plus x to the power of 2 n minus 2 right similarly third term is the coefficient of x to the power n in n c 2 1 plus x to the power 2 n minus 4 and so on in other words you are actually trying to find out coefficient of x to the power n in n c 0 1 plus x to the power 2 n minus n c 1 1 plus x to the power 2 n minus 2 plus n c 2 1 plus x to the power 2 n minus 4 da 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 correct agreed because this particular sum or this particular series will appear when you are looking for the coefficient of x to the power n in this now pay attention here very important observation i will show you here i you activated oh yeah so this term is nothing but all of you please pay attention 1 plus x the whole square to the power of n second term is nc1 1 plus x whole square to the power of n minus 1 third term is nc2 1 plus x the whole square to the power of n minus 2 and so on okay which means we are now finding so see everybody please pay attention take take this term 1 plus x square to be like some number y in your mind so it's like y to the power n y to the power n minus 1 okay so can i say it is actually y in this case y is our 1 plus x the whole square minus 1 to the power of n or not remove this nc0 not required anymore isn't it so isn't this a binomial expression in itself correct no so imagine you treating this as some y minus 1 to the power n if you write it how will you write it nc0 y to the power n minus nc1 y to the power n minus 1 Plus n c two y to the power n minus two da 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 da. This is all you are going to write. So imagine that this term is this way is actually written over here. So n c zero y to the power n minus n c two one y to the power n minus one like that. Okay. So in light of this, can I now reduce my problem to saying I have to find out what is the coefficient of x to the power n in 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 this expression which is actually 2x plus x square to the power of n correct now if you take x out 
you are actually finding the coefficient of x to the power n in this. Yes or no? Now x to the power n is already sitting over here, so you just require a constant from here that will give you the coefficient. So what is the constant term that you will get from here? Two to the power n. So this becomes your answer to the question because x to the power n is already there. So any x to the power n into that constant will be the term which will be giving you that x to the power n related term. So the coefficient of x to the power n will actually be the constant that you will get from two plus x to the power n, which is only one constant, two to the power n, isn't it? See, when you expand this, you get two to the power n, you'll end up getting n c one, two to the power n minus one x, da, 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 da. So if you do a multiplication, x to the power n will occur only with two to the power n, right? Rest all the terms will have higher powers than n, right? So we'll have n plus one, da, 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 da. So the coefficient of x to the power n is this guy. That's what I wrote over here. Okay. So these kind of questions are slightly difficult to crack. Okay. But don't worry, you'll be getting a, you know, DPP where you'll be having more of, you know, more questions of this type, which you can practice. Okay. So uh, we'll take a small break over here. Uh, I think this was a very heavy problem for you. So you need a break. So on the other side of the break, we will look into some more series and then we'll start with uh, binomial expansion for any real power. That means it could be negative integer power or fractional power. And then we'll wind up this uh, topic with multinomial theorem. Okay. Not the one which you did in PNC. In PNC, you, it was actually a, uh, you know, uh, resemblance to a multinomial theorem, but actually multinomial theorem was not used there. It looked, the expression looked like a multinomial theorem. Okay. Anyways, so let's have a break right now. The time as of now is 6.16. So we will meet exactly. 6 31 p.m. sharp. Okay. On the other side, we'll take up a few more series on binomial coefficients and then we'll start with binomial theorem for any real index and then multinomial theorem. Okay. Enjoy your break. So this time I'm going to talk about product of binomial coefficient. I, let me write it like this sum of product of binomial coefficient. So this is another type of questions, which is normally asked. Okay. Let me begin with a simple question here. I think uh, there's no snapshot of that. Okay. Let's take this question. Uh, find the sum of C0 square, C1 square, C2 square, C3 square. That means if you're taking the product of the binomial coefficient with itself, that means you're squaring those binomial coefficient and adding them. What is this sum going to be equal to? And how are you going to find that sum out most importantly? Okay. Now, let me give you an idea. Uh, of how to do these kind of a problems from this example. And then I'll give you a follow up question. Now, see, we already know one plus X to the power N, right? What is it? C zero C one X C two X square C three X cube and so on till C and X to the power N. Correct. Yes or no? Right. Now you write the same, uh, binomial term in a reverse fashion. That means put X as your first term and one as your second term. So this is going to lead to this expression. Correct. Yes or no. Okay. Now try to identify, try to identify that if you want to make C zero square, which two terms you need to multiply. And you'll say, sir, obviously, sir, these two terms need to be multiplied. If you want to get C1 square, which two terms need to will be multiplied? These two terms are needed to be multiplied. Correct. Similarly, C2 square, these two terms, C3 square, these two terms, da, 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 da. CN square, these two terms are going to be multiplied, right? Thankfully, 
C0 square, C1 square, C2 square, C3 square, etc. They all are actually coefficients of x to the power of n. As you can see, when you completely multiply these two terms, you'll end up getting like C0 square xn. Isn't it? When you completely multiply these two terms, you will end up getting C1 square xn. When you completely multiply these two terms, you get C2 square xn and da 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 till this term. Now, what is this actually? The observation here is that your given series, let's say I call this as S. The given series actually occurs as a coefficient of x to the power n. When you multiply these two binomial expressions, right? So what I want to say here is when you multiply these two binomial expressions, you will end up getting several terms. In that term, you will be having something like x to the power n. Da, 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 da. By the way, please note that the maximum power it can go up till is x to the power 2n. Okay. So in that particular series, when you are multiplying, you will get one such term x to the power n whose coefficient will be your given series. Isn't it not? Because, see, when you're multiplying the top series with the bottom series, you'll get plethora of terms, right from constant till x to the power 2n. Correct? So I, I am not interested in all those terms. I'm interested in one particular term, which I identified as x to the power n, because that x to the power n coefficient is basically these expressions, which I have in my series. Are you getting my point? So in short, what I want, in short, I want the coefficient of x to the power n in this expression. So in this expression, I just need what is the coefficient of x to the power n that itself will be my required series. Are you getting my point? And what is the coefficient of x to the power n in 1 plus x to the power 2n? It's 2n cn. So this becomes your answer to the question. Is it clear? Right? Any questions, any concerns? So here the standard operating procedure is we try to figure out which consistent power of x is coming along with all these terms. Okay, so here x to the power n was occurring with c0 square, c1 square, c2 square, c3 square. So in totality, the coefficient would have been the sum of all of them, which is actually your series. So if I am able to find out what is the coefficient of x to the power n in the product of these two, that coefficient will be my required answer. Are you getting my point? Now, many people think that multiplication happens one below the other. No, I'm not adding, I'm multiplying. Multiplication happens one term with every other term. Okay. So I'm not interested in all the terms. You will end up getting almost you know, several terms. I'm just interested in one particular term, which is x to the power n. Are you getting my point here? Now, many people actually remember this result also because it is useful in solving some complicated version of the question. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Okay, try this one out. Can I move on to the next slide? Okay. Find the sum of this series. C0, C1, C1, C2, C2, C3, till Cn minus 1, Cn. Try this out, everybody. Let me see whether you are able to extrapolate that concept to solve this question.
Yes. Uh, let me just write down our regular series here. And let me write the same series in a reverse order also. Huh? How is that possible, Satyam? Okay. Now all of you, please pay attention. Yeah, that is correct. See, this term will be obtained when these two guys will interact. Correct. This term will be obtained when these two guys interact or there is a multiplication happening between these two terms. Similarly, this term will come C2, C3 will come when these two guys will multiply. Correct. Now, what do you see here is that, I mean, just me write. Yeah. What you see here is that this term or this term or this term or this term till the last term actually is coming with the x to the power n minus one power. Do you see that? So if you do a complete multiplication, c0, c1 comes along with x to the power n minus one. Similarly, c1, c2 also comes with x to the power n minus one. Yes or no? Likewise, the last term also that comes along with x to the power n minus one. Yes or no? In short, if you multiply these two series, if you multiply these two series, you will end up getting so many terms, <coughs> but I'm interested in that term, which comes along with x to the power n minus one. And that term is what will be carrying your given series as your coefficient, isn't it? So the problem boils down to finding the coefficient of x to the power n minus one in this expression, which is nothing but 2n c n minus one, which you can also write as 2n c n plus one. Both are fine because of your n c r equal to n c n minus r property. Okay. Now, some of you would have done this. Some of you would have multiplied these. Isn't it? Let me put them in white. Right? This. This. Correct? In that case, you will have to see what is the coefficient of x to the power of n plus 1. And you will be surprised to know even x to the power n plus 1 will have the same series as its coefficient. So either you do like this or you find the coefficient of x to the power n plus one in the product or in one plus x to the power two n, which ultimately gives you this expression. And as, I, as you already seen that they are both equal. So either of the two mechanisms can lead to the same result. Okay. Now let me generalize this. Let me generalize this. Uh, but before I analyze it, please copy anything you want to. And uh, if you have any questions, please do let me know. Okay, so I'll just generalize this. Uh, in case this result is quite useful to you, you can use it. So the generalization is if you have C0 CR, C1 CR plus one, C2 CR plus two, da 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 da, till CN minus R CN. Okay, this result is given to you as 2N CN minus R or 2n c n plus r both are fine okay so please remember this so this might helpful be be helpful to you in solving a complicated version of the same question okay so in our first example our r was zero isn't it that's why we got c0 square c1 square c2 square that time the result was 2n c n 
in our question which i gave you on this slide itself your r was 1 isn't it c0 c1 c1 c2 c2 c3 etc so your result became 2n cn minus 1 or 2n cn plus 1 both are fine okay so this is something which might be helpful to you in solving questions okay so with this we are now going to go towards binomial uh, expansion for any power okay that's a simple result i'll just be giving it to you binomial theorem for any index for any index that means any real number power it could be fraction it could be negative integers right so let me start with a very simple expression 1 plus x to the power n n being any integer sorry n being any uh, a real number so it could be negative integers also so in this in these cases you realize that your expansion goes like this i think i have already discussed this in your bridge course also so here couple of things to be noted down number 1 it's an infinite series it's an infinite series if your n is not a whole number why because in our whole number in our whole number indexes we used to stop somewhere because we used to reach a stage where you, where we have to write n minus n isn't it see actually speaking uh when you write 1 plus x whole cube or let's say whole square so you have 2 c 0 1 to the power 2 plus okay in fact 2 c 0 is nothing but 1 itself then you have n into n into 1 to the power of 1 x to the power 1 okay then you have n into n minus 1 by 2 x to the power sorry 1 to the power 0 x to the power 2 okay and the next term which ideally we don't write is 2 into 2 minus 1 2 minus 2 by 3 factorial okay whatever comes here but this entire thing goes for a zero sorry about that sound yeah so that is why this particular series comes to a stop comes to a halt but such a thing is not going to happen if your n is not a whole number it's going to go on and on and on forever are you getting my point because you are always subtracting an integer from that number and if that number is a negative integer it is never going to vanish if it is a fraction also or let's say a number having some decimal values also that is also never going to vanish that's the whole reason why this entire series goes on and on forever okay that's number one point to note down number two point to note down we do not use do not use ncr if your n is a non whole number we should never use ncr expression there is nothing called minus 1 c1 <laughs> there is nothing called 3 by 2 c1 okay that is why instead of nc0 nc1 nc2 we are actually using the expansions of it okay third thing is for this series to be convergent or for this binomial theorem to hold true your mod of x should be less than 1 this is called the condition for convergence and nothing new this is something which we have already you know had a taste in our bridge course also now why is this you know expression mod x should be less than 1 that means why should my x be between minus 1 to 1 the reason for that is if you see your right hand side is an infinitely term expression and your left hand side is a finite term for a given x yes or no for a given x and for a given n your left hand side will be a finite term unless until x itself is very very large okay and n is very very large okay so for a finite value of n and a finite value of x your left hand term will be finite but your right hand side term may become infinity because you are summing up till infinity you are summing up till infinitely many terms so to keep your left hand side and right hand side values coherent with each other or agreeing with each other we need to ensure that even if the right hand side is going up till infinity or infinite number of terms its sum should be finite in other words you want that particular series on the right side 
to be a convergent one convergent means even though if it is sub, sum till infinite terms its sum should be a finite value and for that to happen this condition is fulfilled now don't ask me why this condition came it is going to be taught to you in your second semester of your undergrad when you are going to learn series chapter there so there are various tests for convergence okay there is a limit test there is a ratio test there is a rabi's test there is a dlm word test there are so many tests there is a p int there is a p test there is an integral test <laughs> so all those tests you are going to study in your undergrad not right now okay so these are the three things you need to keep in your mind while you are writing a binomial expression for an infinite term okay now many people ask me sir how will it change if there was a a over here instead of an a one okay one i took for my convenience but if there was an a there what would you do and what would be the radius of convergence see nothing different if you took if you had an a over there you could actually write this as this okay and you can again use your same binomial expansion that we had discussed here is just now your x is will be x by a nothing else will change is just that now your x will be x by a da, 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 da. okay so what will be your condition for convergence in this case so condition for convergence here will be this term x by a mod should be less than 1 that is to say mod x should be less than mod a okay let's say a will be given to you as some number so please you know take that into your consideration this will become your condition for convergence is it fine any questions any concerns let's take few questions based on the same okay uh let's take this question assuming x to be so small that x square and higher powers of x can be neglected prove that this expression can be simplified to this okay in fact they should use a yeah this symbol that means it is approximated as 1 minus 305 by 96x as you can see each of each of these factors they are having some kind of a non whole number powers on that so see there is a minus 4 there is a half there is a then okay let's look at this term okay let's say if i want to approximate it so this is acting like my x of the formula right so it's 1 plus n x okay rest of the terms don't bother to write because as i as they have already told you x square and higher powers of x can be neglected so this is approximately equal to 1 minus 3x okay look at the other term so here also i'll do one small activity and you know correct me if i am 
mistaken here. I'll take the 16 out. Okay, when 16 comes out, it will come to the subject of the power half, which means I'll get something like this. Now, many people ask me, sir, why do you do like this? Like, because see, having a one is always a convenience, right? Because one, you don't have to worry about what power is there on one. Okay, you have to only worry about the next term. Okay, so this can be written as four times one minus. Please note that it is actually this one plus half into minus three x by sixteen. Okay, which is approximately four times. Uh, this is one minus three x by thirty-two. That's nothing but four minus three x by eight. Approximately, approximately, as per the given conditions given to me. And likewise, the last term, which is a denominator term, which is this, if I take eight outside eight to the power two by three will be four. If you all agree with me, correct. So this can be approximated as four times one plus two X by 24. Can I write it as X by 12 to be more precise rather than writing 24 and all. So this is approximately four plus X by three. Okay. Now let's put it in the given expression. So then the top two terms will be multiplied. So our given expression could be approximated as one minus three X four minus three X by eight. Okay. And see, when you're taking it to the numerator, it just becomes four minus X by three. Why does it become four minus X by three? Because let's say there was a power of, okay, let, let me just do it over here. First of all. Then I'll write down the result, not directly. Yeah. So let's say this, you took it on the other up, upper side, it would be a power of minus two by three, right? So minus two by three will give you minus two by three will give you one upon four. Sorry. So one, one upon four will come up. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So this will be one upon four and this will be a minus sign. Yeah. So this is going to give you a uh, one by four minus x by 48. Okay. So that will get multiplied over here. one by four minus x by 48. Okay. Now just focus on constant terms over here. So constant terms will obtain when this, this, and this multiply, that is clearly a one. Then focus on x terms. X terms will come when this multiplies with this and then multiplies with one by four. That's one way to get a constant term. Correct. That's going to be minus three x. Correct. Or this minus three X by eight multiplies with one here and one by four over here. That will give you minus three X by 32. Or this term multiplies with four here and one over here. That's going to give you, that's going to give you minus X by 12. Okay. Let's try to see how much it comes out to be. Okay. So let's take a LCM of, of, of 96, I believe. So this is going to be negative 288 minus nine, correct? Minus eight. So that's nothing but, that's nothing but one minus three not five by 96 X. Okay. Is it fine? So very important tool when it comes to approximating things like this. So very, very useful in physics chapters also. Is everybody clear how this works? So what I did first was I took this expression. Let me write it once again here. I took this expression like this one plus one plus three X by four to the power minus four 16 minus three X to the power half. And I wrote it as eight plus X to the power minus two by three. Each one of them I approximated. So as you can see, I've approximated each one of them. And then I finally multiplied it. And here also I'm only interested in constant terms and coefficients of X. Higher powers of X, including X square are all neglected. Okay. So this is how you end up getting the given result. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? <laughs> You have, we want to have a look at this expansions. Please have a look at it, how I've done it.
फाइन एनी क्वेश्चन एनी बडी नो क्वेश्चन चलो ग्रेट सो विद दिस वी मूव ऑन टू अनदर क्वेश्चन find the sum of this series to infinity 1 minus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 into 3 by 16 minus 1 by 8 3 by 16 5 by 24 and so on and so forth Yes, sir. Anybody? Anybody with any success? Okay. See here. Everybody, please pay attention. You have to be a very good observer over here. You have something like one by eight. Okay. Now this term that you have one by eight and three by sixteen. let's say i take an 8 common okay i'll get a 1 into 2 which is actually 2 factorial correct now see i have this particular expression in my mind uh the binomial expression that we have written okay so 1 plus nx n into n minus 1 by 2 sorry n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial x square and so on correct the next term will be Uh, n into n minus one, n minus two by three factorial x cube. Da 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 da. Okay. Now let's see. So this two factorial that is sitting over here, I am able to make it. Okay. Now one and three, the gap is two. So when you subtracted one from the first expression, you end up getting a three on the top. This makes me believe, and correct me if I am wrong. This makes me believe that there was a one by two here. Okay. In fact, minus one by two here. Again, and you subtracted a one from here, which gave you minus three by two. Okay, and this was two factorial, and I think one more two is left off. Okay. Acha. By the way, uh, a small mistake which I am doing here. It would be eight square. Because if you're taking eight eight common from both of them, it will be eight square. Okay, so I have to have a sixty four here. So this will also change. One second. So this is sixty four. Correct. Now sixty four, and you have already taken out uh, two two from here. So four has been taken. So sixteen, and sixteen should be square of something. So can I say it is something like this? 
correct so this term gives me a hint that it could be of this nature am i right that means i got an idea about the first term also the first term is actually minus half into 1 by 4 right now it is making sense to me that my next term should have been minus half minus 3 by 2 minus 5 by 2 by 3 factorial 1 by 4 cube and you realize that this expression is your given term over here this term check of course with a minus sign so let me engross the minus sign also check it out and let me know whether you are convinced right so you have to be a good observer here. You can't solve this question blindly. Okay. So this is actually, this is actually the expansion of one, one plus four to the power of minus half. That means this entire series comes out to be this, which is actually four by five under root which is nothing but two by root five. So the answer to this question is this series is going to give you answer as two by root five. Plain and simple over question solved, <laughs> but easier said than done. This finding this entire expression is not that, you know, simple a task. Many people, you know, fault falter there. Okay. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? So when infinite series is given to you, please keep binomial theorem for non whole number powers also in your purview, also in your consideration. So all infinite series are not inspired from Maclaurin series or infinite series are not expired from VN method. So there could be some infinite series, which you could solve by using your binomial theorem or non whole number index. Is it fine? Again, to build up this, you have to practice questions. Okay. Don't worry. We'll be sharing the required DPPs and I'm sure some DPPs have these type of questions. Okay. So in the interest of time, we only have 25 odd minutes left. So we'll be quickly discussing a multinomial theorem just to wind up this chapter. So our next topic will be multinomial theorem. So multinomial theorem is a theorem uh, where you will be learning. In fact, we get to know how to expand these kind of expressions. Okay. Where instead of two variables or two, you can say dissimilar terms, we have R dissimilar terms. And again, you're raising it to a whole number power. Okay. So we are only going to restrict ourselves to whole number powers. We are not going to talk about how to use multinomial theorem when the power is a non whole number. So that is beyond our purview. We are not going to study about that. So this expression, again, again, I'm going to give this to you without any proof. This expression gives you summation. Note this down expression. I'll just give an example to illustrate this expression. So it's summation n factorial upon alpha one factorial, alpha two factorial till alpha R factorial X to the X one to the power alpha one X two to the power alpha two da, 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 till XR to the power alpha R. So it's a summation of this where, where alpha I's are all whole numbers such that their sum is their sum is equal to n i know there is a very ugly expression to look at but i'll just give an example to illustrate this first note this down and also tell you why did not i mention any upper lower limits of summation because it depends upon your n value so we'll discuss about that it depends upon your n and r Okay. So first note this expression down, then I'll give you a simple example. This is R only. Okay. So 
sorry for that overwriting there. Okay, done. Okay. So to make you understand this formula, which I have written, which quite looks quite ugly, I'll give you a very simple example, which you probably will be aware of. A plus B plus C the whole square. Okay. Now the, the reason why I've chosen this expression is because it's a multinomial. First of all, because A, B, C, three terms are involved. And secondly, you know, the expansion of it, right? So that when I write it, when I finally write down my result using this formula, you can match it with the result, which is already known to you. Okay. So that you are convinced that this formula works. Now, as for this formula, we have to first write down three such numbers. In fact, R here is three. So we have to write three such numbers, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, which are actually whole numbers where their sum is going to be N, N is two in this case. Okay. Now let us list out. What all possible values of alpha one, alpha two, alpha three can come up such that they are whole numbers and their sum should be equal to two. So it's very simple. One combination will be two zero zero. Correct. So they are all whole numbers and their sum is two also. Another would be zero two zero. Let's go step by step. Then zero zero two, okay. Then one one zero. Then one zero. In fact, let me write it like this: zero one one. And then last combination will be one zero one. Is it fine? Is there any other possibility? No possibility. Okay. Now let us make use of this summation process. So it is summation of all these kind of terms with various combinations of alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, which you have already figured it out. Okay. So. The first sum that I will be getting is n factorial, which is nothing but two factorial alpha one, alpha two, alpha three is factorial. So as per my first case, as per this case, it will be two factorial, zero factorial, zero factorial, then X one to the power alpha one, which in this case is a, a to the power alpha one, X two to the power alpha two, which is B to the power zero and X three, which is our C, C to the power zero. And keep writing summation of all such terms. So the next term will be again two factorial. Now for focus on this zero to zero. So zero to zero means zero factorial, two factorial, zero factorial, a to the power zero, b to the power two, c to the power zero. Again for the next term, focus on this third one. So we have covered up this one. Now focus on this third one. So as per the third one, my expression will be two factorial. Zero factorial, zero factorial, two factorial, a to the power zero, b to the power zero, c to the power ten. Oh, sorry, c to the power two. Then focus on the fourth one. This is our fourth one. Alpha is one. Sorry, alpha one is one. Alpha two is also one. Alpha three is zero. So it will become two factorial, one factorial, one factorial, zero factorial, a to the power one, b to the power one, c to the power one. Okay. Again, the next term will come from this guy. Okay, zero one one combination. So zero one one means it will be two factorial. Are you? Why I'm changing the pen color? Yeah, two factorial, zero factorial, one factorial, one factorial, a to the power zero, b to the power one, c to the power one, and the last term will come from this combination. Okay, so that is going to be two factorial. One factorial, zero factorial, one factorial, a to the power one, b to the power zero, c to the power one. Now this term itself, when you simplify, you are going to see a square. As you can see, this is going to be a square. This is going to be b square. This is going to be c square. 
this is going to be 2ab check this is going to be 2bc and this is going to be 2ac or 2ca okay so the expansion that you used to write effortlessly in your class 10th or 9th whenever you learn that is actually based out of such expansions okay now don't worry nobody is going to ask you to expand multinomial theorem for sure but what you should actually figure out is this expression okay so they may they might ask you the coefficient of certain expression in a multinomial theorem so please remember this this is very very important is it fine any questions any concerns that you have with respect to this okay i think uh, okay so just remember this expression no proof and all is required for this let's take questions for the next 15 minutes we'll take a few questions based on the same uh let me start with very simple question how many total number of distinct or dissimilar terms would be there in this expansion so this takes me to our first class the very first session that we had on binomial theorem where i talked about how many dissimilar terms are there in a multinomial expansion like this does anybody remember that so maximum number of dissimilar terms okay how much is it so if let's say you had x1 x2 x3 let's say they are all different from each other okay then the maximum number of dissimilar terms used to be n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 right so in our case in our case the answer would be uh n is n r is actually 4 so it would be n plus 4 minus 1 c 4 minus 1 which is n plus 3 c 3 so this will be your maximum number of dissimilar terms okay now the question actually doesn't say maximum number but see here uh, the problem is uh, the the question is basically dealing with such terms which are dissimilar themselves so they are assuming that the product of two dissimilar terms is not creating you know a term which is obtained by the product of the other two that means uh, no combination of powers on x y z and w is creating an expression similar to any other combination are you getting what i'm trying to say okay so basically they're trying to say see let's say if i say 1 to the power 5 or 1 to the power 2 okay 1 to the power 2 can also be obtained when we have something like this also multiplied correct so if you had 1 plus x plus 1 by x okay they raised to certain power let's say power of 2 so if you have a expression like this or if you have an expression like this they will both be of similar nature because both are creating or both are producing constants here okay so in that case your formula is going to fail that is why i wrote maximum number of dissimilar terms will be this which the question setter is assuming that all the terms will be dissimilar okay so that's an assumption that they have made but please understand please understand it actually gives you the maximum dissimilar terms there is something which they don't write on the screen here sometimes i scribble and it doesn't write yeah is it fine okay so we'll move on to the next question find the coefficient of a to the power 4 b cube c square d in this expansion
Oh, you calculated it also, Satya. Very good. <laughs> I mean, you can leave your answer in terms of factorial. I don't mind it. Okay, so first thing that you would observe here is that this sum should add up to 10. Okay. So there is some power of A, some power of B, sorry, some power of minus B, some power of C, and some power of minus D, which is actually resembling this expression. Okay. And it will be preceded by Let's say I call these numbers as alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4. So it will be having a coefficient which is 10 factorial by alpha 1 factorial, alpha 2 factorial, alpha 3 factorial, alpha 4 factorial. Okay. Now, if you try to make a direct comparison, alpha 1 comes out to be loud and clear, right, as 4. Now, alpha 2 ideally should come out to be 3, but that would create a minus sign. But let's wait because minus sign is in the last term also. So as per me, alpha 2 should be 3, alpha 3 should be 2, and yes, alpha 4 should be 1. And thankfully, because there is an odd here, odd here, minus minus got adjusted. Okay, so this term is, is what we are going to, okay. Okay, this is what we are going to get as a coefficient of that given term. Okay. So whatever it comes out to be, I think some of you have figured it out, but this is what I needed. Is it fine? Any questions? Any questions? All right. Let's take this question. Find the coefficient of a cube b4 c to the power 5 in the expansion of bc plus ca plus ab to the power of 6. Okay, Harshita. Okay. Uh, one minute more to solve this. I got answers from only two of you, Satyam and Harshita so far. What any UT and all is going on in school? Achha, achha. Janta is not there because of that. Semester 2, UT 2. Okay. Which UT tomorrow? Came on Thursday. Huh? And people are absent today. Wow. It's like you have to go to a party day after tomorrow and you have stopped eating from today itself. <laughs> of course, it has to be a holiday tomorrow, right? Tomorrow is Gantanta Divas, right? Republic Day. 
isn't it okay six factorial okay anybody else okay so let's say that particular term that you're looking for has got alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 as the powers of bc ca and ab respectively now two things to be kept in mind number one alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 should add to 6 okay and number two so if you see here your powers of A would be alpha 2 plus alpha 3 and that should match with 3. Correct? Powers of B will be alpha 1 plus alpha 3 and that should match with 4. Okay? And powers of C will be alpha 2 plus, in fact, alpha 1 plus alpha 2, which should match with 5. Okay? Now, whichever alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 satisfies these two set of conditions simultaneously, those will be put over here and that will be my answer. Okay. Now, but it's very easy to find out. So, from here, I can say alpha 1 is going to be 3. From here, I can say alpha 2 is going to be 2. And from here, I can say alpha 3 is going to be 1. Okay. So, your coefficient of that required term, which is A cube B4 C5, is going to be 6 factorial upon 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial. So it's 720 upon 6 into 2, which is 60. 60 is going to be your answer. Is it fine? Everybody has got 60. Those who said done and those who actually some of you gave me the answer. So well and good. So here many people do a small mistake. They think, I know the sum is not coming out to be 6. By the way, the sum, this A, B, C are not your multinomial terms here. Multinomial terms are B, C, C and A, B. So don't directly try to compare the sum of the powers with this power 6. That is not going to match. Okay. So this is a question with a slight twist. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? Right. So uh, we are now going to stop here because, you know, we have done enough of this chapter. Okay.